Welcome back to the Game Collection. Not too long ago, I reviewed Chrono Trigger, the legendary Super Nintendo JRPG whose impact made waves, the echoes of which can still be felt in game design today. But in today's review, I'm taking a look at Chrono Cross, a game that often gets buried in the deluge of love for its predecessor. But Chrono Cross is a masterpiece in its own right, and it's worth digging in a little deeper to see what makes this game tick. I am Super Derek, and this is Chrono Cross. In my review of Chrono Trigger, I highlighted three key figures who came together to work on creating Chrono Trigger, known as the Dream Team. This team included Yuji Horii, Hironobu Sakaguchi, and Akira Toriyama. Unfortunately, none of these three key figures were involved in the creation of Chrono Cross. Sakaguchi was tied up developing what would eventually become Final Fantasy IX, Horii was working on Dragon Quest VII, and Toriyama was working on the Dragon Ball Z, Tree of Might movies and Dr. Slump TV series. Normally, this would bode poorly for a game responsible for carrying on the mantle that was the legendary Chrono Trigger, and perhaps this was one of the deciding factors that resulted in Chrono Cross being a bit further removed from Chrono Trigger, which plays a bit more like a side story that takes place in the universe created by Chrono Trigger rather than a continuation of the original story. However, a handful of Chrono Trigger veterans returned to work on Chrono Cross, including the scenario writer Masato Kato, who took on the role of director, and art director Yasuyuki Hone, and of course, Yasunori Mitsuda, returning to reprise his role as composer of what many would consider to be some of his greatest work of all time. Joining the team of over a hundred other developers was producer Hiromichi Tanaka, as well as character designer Nobuteru Yuki, who also had previously done design work for Seik and Densetsu 3, as well as several other anime. Chrono Cross follows the story of Surge, a teenage boy who becomes wrapped up in a battle that spans across two alternate realities. Fans of Chrono Trigger will see a couple of familiar faces, but should really be approached without expectation. As I alluded to before, Chrono Cross is not Chrono Trigger 2, so temper your expectations and hype responsibly. I must admit that the very first time I played Chrono Cross back in the day, I was disappointed not to see Chrono, Luca, and Marl reunited in another battle to save time and space. Even so, I was able to see that there was something special in Chrono Cross. It's hard for me to speak objectively about Chrono Cross, but I'll try my best. The overall story of Chrono Cross, if I hold it to the same standards that I've held others like Dot Hack and Kingdom Hearts, is a convoluted mess that really makes the most sense when you don't look at it too closely. And instead, it's best enjoyed with a heaping helping of, don't think about it too hard. Chrono Trigger's shonen anime art style and time-traveling adventure that feels lighthearted enough to hand wave away most of the intrusive thoughts telling you that the game's full of plot holes and paradoxes. You don't care too much that Chrono Trigger introduces the concept of the grandfather time travel paradox in the beginning of the game only to immediately disregard it for the remainder of the game. Chrono Trigger is a romp. It's just good fun. But Chrono Cross doesn't feel like it should receive that same leniency. Why is that? Chrono Cross has more realistic looking characters, more like a seinen anime, which informs the player that this is a more serious story being told. The comic relief is reeled way back in. The tone of Chrono Cross is that of a somber tragedy, further informed by the tear-jerking compositions of Mitsuda. The whole game's cast is full of stories that are bittersweet. Themes of time travel are scaled way back and instead the story centers around the concepts of fate and choice, and how our choices have far-reaching consequences. Chrono Cross is not a light-hearted romp at all. It's a game with weighty themes and an emotionally complex story. It is a game that asks the player to think about the consequences of their choices and to consider the role that time plays on our lives. So when the story is put under a microscope and things don't exactly look like they make sense, and the story is instead a Gordian knot, 
a convoluted mess that JRPGs of the PS1 era are known for, it's kind of harder to shrug it off. But subjectively, though? If I may put those rose-tinted glasses back on for a moment, Chrono Cross is less about the how, the why, and the what. Chrono Cross ain't about the mechanics of the multiverse or the technicalities of time travel. Those are just the medium upon which our vessel sails. Why does the tide go in and the tide go out? It's not what matters. On this voyage, what matters isn't what you know, it's about what you feel. And Chrono Cross, man, it's got feels and spades. I only just wish I could always have the ability to embrace this in other games the way that I can for Chrono Cross. Chrono Cross is pretty well known, for better or for worse, for its sprawling cast of playable characters, drawing comparisons to the Suikoden series. While this does not have 108 stars of destiny, Chrono Cross does have 45 total playable characters, including some who are temporary. A contentious decision made by the developers is that the player cannot recruit all characters in a single playthrough, instead requiring players to take no fewer than three paths through the game to catch them all. That's not the contentious part, though. What is contentious is that in order to recruit some characters, the player must sometimes make unintuitive choices when prompted in order to recruit characters who are seemingly unrelated to the question at hand, and in some cases making what appears to be a callous decision during the tense moment of the game in order to recruit Glenn, who is arguably the coolest character in the entire game. And on that note, not all characters were created equally, to put it mildly. Some characters feel like they were designed as main characters, with fully fleshed out backstories and super cool mythical weaponry. Some characters have thought put into their speech, into their history and the world, and others feel like Pip, a novelty character whose stats are actually bugged, making them nearly unplayably weak in combat. Speaking of combat, Chrono Cross also has a combat system that I've not seen replicated anywhere else. No other game has made a combat system quite like Chrono Cross, which is a real shame because Chrono Cross, as a JRPG, defies so many conventions that we all take for granted in Japanese RPGs that it's kind of amazing that the concepts haven't been assimilated into other varieties of Japanese-style role-playing games. Chrono Cross gets rid of the concept of experience points in the traditional sense, Levels are gained when bosses are defeated, and by fighting some monsters you can gain a smattering of additional stat bonuses, but you cannot find yourself over-leveled. You cannot find your teammates under-leveled. You can still, through exploration and equipment optimization, find yourself overpowered if you so choose, but leveling is a non-problem, and grinding is rarely a solution to making progress. Combat is turn-based, and during a turn, party members have up to 7 points of stamina that they can expend on physical attacks of varying power and accuracy in exchange for more stamina. Quick jabs cost a single point and have a greater accuracy, and the most powerful attacks cost 3 stamina points and are less accurate, but do considerably more damage. Each successive hit during a turn raises accuracy of the next attack, so there is a risk-reward system in place where players might attack with a 1-2-3 combo to get a great chance of dealing a good chunk of damage, or attacking with a 3-3 combo with a lower chance of dealing maximum damage. The elemental grid is the magic system of Chrono Cross and is one of my favorite mechanics in the game. Chrono Cross does not have an MP system. Instead, you have a grid of elements that you can buy or discover in chests or steal from enemies during combat. These elements can be equipped to each character's grid. Each element can be used once per encounter, except for healing consumable elements that act like potions in the game. Just because the elements are equipped though does not mean you can use them straight from the get-go. Remember how each physical attack needs some number of stamina points? Well, successful hits adds that number of stamina points to your columns of usable elements, meaning if you hit enemies with three stamina points worth of attacks, you can use the first three weakest columns of elements in your elemental grid. More successful attacks unlocks additional and more powerful columns of elements. So for a single turn of combat, if a character starts off with seven full points of stamina, they could attack with a 1-2-3 combo, and with their final point of stamina they can use an element in the sixth column of the grid. This will, however, consume more stamina than the party member has left, sending them into a stamina deficit of six points. 
These points regenerate over the course of the round dependent upon the character's stats, but up to 7 points per turn of combat, meaning characters with high stamina can repeat this each round of combat, whereas others might start their next round with 6 or fewer points of stamina to work with. If one of your party members falls during combat, the number of turns they have to recover stamina decreases as well, making for some very sticky situations. Between innate and elemental affinities, field effects, trap elements, and summons, the combat system is far more complex than I have time to go into in a simple video like this, but suffice it to say, this truly feels like a completely unique spin on the JRPG combat formula that seems daunting at first, but quickly becomes intuitive. And what's perhaps best about this system is how new mechanics are drip-fed to the player during scripted and goofy encounters with the lovable soldier duo of Salt and Pepor, who disguise this game's built-in tutorials as brief comedy sketches tied to related storyline relevant events. One of the few connections in gameplay between Chrono Trigger and Chrono Cross is the lack of random encounters on the map and the implementation of scripted encounters is honestly head and shoulders above the implementation of Chrono Trigger. All encounters are actually able to be seen from the world map, so the player will never feel completely taken off guard. Chrono Trigger sometimes had invisible tiles that would trigger enemies to come on screen and then attack without warning. Chrono Cross eliminates these. In addition, you can actually retreat from just about every single boss fight to reconfigure your party, equipment, and elemental loadouts if needed. Another carryover from Chrono Trigger is the game's signature dual and triple techs. However, these are far less common to come across and contributes significantly to that feeling of certain characters being fleshed out more than others and feeling more like canonized main characters. The world presented in Chrono Cross is a much smaller scale than that which was represented in Chrono Trigger. In Chrono Trigger, not only did you have an entire globe to explore, you also got to explore it across several eras. Chrono Cross, on the other hand, allows you to explore only a small archipelago across two alternate realities set in the same era. At face value, this might make it sound like the world of Chrono Cross is a much smaller one, but while Chrono Cross doesn't allow you to explore the entire planet, it instead gives the player an extremely detailed look into this small cluster of islands, each of which has its own unique points of interest, people, and cultures. It's incredibly fascinating to get such a deep look into the El Nido archipelago because the cluster of islands was so insignificant in Chrono Trigger that it wasn't even included as a locale you could visit. It drives my imagination wild to think that if a place as rich and detailed as El Nido wasn't even on Chrono Trigger's map, what other incredible locations might be out there hidden in this world waiting to be explored? Some locations vary wildly between the two alternate realities while you would be hard pressed to spot the differences between other locations. In particular, the city of Termina is a neat standout showing a city during a celebration contrasted with an alternate version while it's under military occupation. Yet island life in the village of Arnie is mostly the same, though it's still worth noting that some villagers definitely lead wildly different lives. In showcasing these differences, the world design helps further illustrate the literary themes of fate and self-determination, and whenever the world design of a game complements the story rather than simply being relegated to a pretty backdrop, I have to give high praises. From a graphical perspective, Chrono Cross is, in my opinion, among the best-looking Squaresoft RPGs of the era on the PlayStation, alongside the likes of Final Fantasy IX. The game begins with some great-looking pre-rendered FMVs that still hold up to this day despite their ultra-low bitrate compression and low resolution. The in-game visuals were also pretty impressive, all things considered. The hand-painted backgrounds were always a treat to behold and helped draw me further into the world. The characters in combat were surprisingly detailed for the time as well, which was also an impressive feat considering the sheer number of playable characters they had to model and animate. The game did not run particularly well on the PlayStation though, often running below 20 frames per second, with some dips flirting with single-digit FPS territory. The music of Chrono Cross still comes up to this day in the discussion about the best RPG soundtracks of all time, often nearing the top of many lists, including my own. So when the enhanced vinyl soundtrack went up for sale on PlayAsia, it wound up finding itself in my shopping cart and on its way to my home before I had even realized what I was doing. I didn't even really have a choice in the matter, really. The music of Chrono Cross is really just that good. 
That enhanced soundtrack was released in tandem with the Radical Dreamers Edition re-release of Chrono Cross on the Nintendo Switch. This enhanced port of the game featured the titular Radical Dreamers game that occurred non-canonically between the events of Chrono Trigger and Chrono Cross. This title was only ever released for a limited time in Japan via the Super Nintendo Satellaview. I have a full video talking more about Radical Dreamers specifically if you're curious if it's worth your while. Additionally, the Radical Dreamers edition increases the polygon count of several character models, cleans up the textures, adds newly arranged tracks, and hard codes some quality of life improvements such as the ability to turn on and off encounters, speed up and slow down the game's speed, and cheat modes that allow you to use any element at any time without building up power first. The remaster also allows you to turn off these enhancements to return to the stock experience if you prefer. The remaster also has a new localization, which I think may be worth it alone for some die-hard fans. Unfortunately, the remaster did not improve the game's frame rate, but instead trades blows with the original release, sometimes being slower and sometimes being faster than the original release depending on the scene being displayed. All in all, not bad for something they had to reprogram without the source code. Decreasing the Nintendo Switch's output resolution down from 1080p to 720p seems to have an appreciable impact on the game's frame rate in my experience. One could also decrease the Switch's output down to 480p to get a very authentic presentation while still benefiting from the port's enhancements. Upon the original release of Chrono Cross, it got as decent reviews from critics as could be asked for during the time, but from fans, the discourse would be far less understanding. Fans of Chrono Trigger, including myself, were left confused about why this game was even considered a Chrono title at all. Chrono Cross had massive shoes to fill for an audience starved for Chrono goodness. In hindsight, I wonder what kind of game could have possibly fulfilled the desires of fans of the era. And the fact that Chrono Cross took such a decidedly sharp turn in terms of style, storytelling, character development, combat, world design, and... Basically, every other measure of a Japanese RPG didn't help at all, I'm sure. I've sometimes talked about how growing up I didn't have a ton of RPGs to play, so instead I replayed a handful of games over and over. Games like Secret of Mana, Earthbound, and Chrono Cross. And with Chrono Cross, it seemed like there was always something new to discover, some hidden character to unlock, some different ending to look at, and some different dialogue to discover. And even this time around, in my most recent playthrough of Radical Dreamers Edition on Nintendo Switch, I still found new details hidden just out of sight. To me, the replay value of Chrono Cross isn't just some nebulous concept of what I could hypothetically do someday if I ever decided to replay the game, despite having a backlog as deep as, well, the ocean. To me, it's a lived experience. And it's an incredibly unique experience that I can't wait for more people to be able to try out. Because perhaps even more so than Chrono Trigger, Chrono Cross is one of a kind. And that's why it's got a spot in the game collection.